here. You're a fan of Port Adelaide player for a week or so now. How does it all feel? How are you settling in? Um, yeah, obviously coming to your, your club you supported your whole life is really exciting. And um, yeah, everyone, when they introduce you, you, just have a smile on your face the whole time. And especially getting out to the track, it's just really exciting. So loving it at the moment. Sun's out, so beautiful days. And yeah, it's been really good. How surreal has it been for you? Um, yeah, still, still trying to get my head around it. But obviously almost a week into it now and it's starting to become come every day so yeah I'm loving it at the moment so hopefully keep loving it. For sure have you have you been starstruck at all was that I mean given that it's you know it's your boyhood club and, and you've idolized a lot of these players growing up were you starstruck at all when you met the likes of Robbie Gray and that on, on day one? Yeah I'm um, obviously having those five plus a year players coming into their 16th season in Robbie and Trav um, yeah it's a bit surreal saying g'day to them but you know, they're blokes as well, so you just say good day and onto the track with them. So um, meeting Kenny was a big, big one for me just because you've always seen him on TV and it was uh, really, I was really excited to meet him and he's, he's a great fella. So, what, what did he say to you, Kenny? I uh, just said, how are you? Where are you from? Um, you know, he's happy that I'm from the farm, so he thought it was a bit easier to talk to me, but no, nah, he's, he's a great fella, Kenny. Yeah, um, we'll get into training and stuff shortly, but I mean, um, we all saw the, the reaction video and um, Unreal Scenes. Uh, in your household, uh, can you talk us through that moment? Oh, I still still can't explain how it all happened, but um, yeah, when your name gets called out, it's, it's a feeling you'll never forget. Um, it's hard to explain. It's just all all emotions just come flooding through. So it was it was a great moment for me and my family, and um, yeah, just really grateful that Port Adelaide have given me the opportunity. Sure. Who's uh, taking you under their wing so far? Um, so I've been in the rehab group for the first week, and Kane Farrell is um, yeah, I've been trying to stay under his wing, and he's he's been a great role model for me so far. Staying under the wingman's wing. Um, yeah. Uh, your hips, how are they? A bit, bit sore? What's, yeah. What's so the um, I've had a bit of issues with high end speed, so um, I'm just I'm finding my sort of range, and I'm thinking of surgery. So just get that over and done with. So. I'll be ready to go next year. So um, I think recovery is just lots of rehab in the gym, build up my core, and I think I'll be ready to go next year. Good. When do you go in for that? Uh, next week, Tuesday. So, yeah, coming up. So I'm, I'm a bit nervous, but I'm sure once it's over and done with, I'll be into the gym. So. Sure, and you're in good hands now as well with, with the docs here yes. as well. Um, so that, sorry, is that a bit bittersweet? You know, you've obviously been drafted, but obviously now you're already going to miss your first year because of surgery. Um, yeah, look, I don't, I don't dwell on it too much. I think it is just the pre-season, so I'll miss a majority of pre-season and then maybe three or four weeks. So I'll be, I'll be back out on the track maybe end of March, middle of March. So I'm just keen to get there pretty much, get my body right and back onto the track at 100%. So, yeah. Uh, Paul obviously knew about that um, yeah. at the time. So does that show you their, their real faith in you that, that they're willing to, you know, it's not a risk, but but to, to take that on board when they picked you up. Yeah, um, I, 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 they knew and they um, communicated with me quite well um, with my injuries and sort of where my body was at. And I think they've got a good enough support staff and medical team to help me out. So, yeah, I'm glad that I've been picked up by Port and have them fellas around me to support me. Great. And uh, your role once you do get on the park, you've, you've been a bit of a, a pig in, in, in the sample <laughs> level. How do you see yourself fitting into the team? Um, oh, just wherever I can. I feel like on the wing or into the midfield, maybe a half forward sort of rotating through. Um, I do have a lot of leg speed and a, a smaller frame, so sort of more outside will be my sort of role. And I'm really keen to find where I fit in the team. Dante, how are you settling in? Uh, yeah, well, um, it's a bit of a crazy couple of days moving over from Melbourne and flying in, but uh, yeah, just getting into the swing of pre-season and um, settling in as a professional athlete and trying to, yeah, just get myself going and start improving in all sort of aspects. Sure, who are you living with? Uh, at the moment, just moved in with Tom Jonas, the skipper, yesterday, so um, yeah, they got a lovely household and uh, young Matilda um, there and yeah, really good place to be. Cool. Norwood's a good part of the world as well. Um, What's uh, what's that like for you? One day you're um you know you're an undrafted kid and, and now you're living with the Port Adelaide captain. What's that dynamic like for you? Um yeah, it is a bit surreal as a lot of people probably say in this situation because yeah, one minute you're just playing footy, trying to hit the highest level you can, and then the next yeah, sort of in a new city, new environment. But I'm just trying as best I can to adjust, and um, yeah, I think. Port as a club are really good at that. They've got a lot of interstate boys and um, yeah, just fantastic in the welfare department. And so, um, yeah, I think I'm settling in pretty well. Still 
you know, get my head around suburbs and places like that. I'm a bit lost sometimes, but um, yeah, settling well. What are you and the skipper talked about at dinner time after the training and all that sort of wrapped up? Um, not too much footy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I think, yeah, we watched a bit of um, the newsroom last night, just settling in. I'm, I'm yeah, falling asleep pretty early these days after training. Um, but, yeah, pretty much uh, anything and everything, really. Sure. What's um, Kenny and, and some of the coaching staff said to you to you so far? What, what do they want to see from you in this pre-season? Um, I think, as with uh, a lot of sort of taller boys, um, like we, I know that it's going to take a little bit for me to develop. To develop. So, I think they just want me to com like sort of in um, contest stuff just to compete, and then also just in every drill just to be um, working really hard to improve and stuff. And uh, I'm really focusing on like things like marking and stuff, just trying to um, yeah develop and get my timing right and things like that. But uh, yeah, as I said, it's just trying to improve as much as possible and. Um, learn as much as possible as well because we're coming into sort of a new structure and um, a lot of these uh, words and structures that yeah I, we've never experienced before so just yeah trying to soak it all up. For sure. Um, where do you see yourself playing your best footy? Uh, probably yeah a bit of rock forward or even down back something like that. Um, I've been thrown around a fair bit as a junior so um, I'm used to sort of being told to switch ends, but um, yeah, probably in reality it might start in the forward line, something like that, and then hopefully build my body up a bit more and a little bit uh, light on as it, as it stands. So yeah, maybe rock forward, something like that. I saw they paired you up with Scotty Lysett in, in the group session. What was that like going up against him? Oh uh, yeah, it was pretty pretty tough. Um, I think he was probably going easy on me as well, but um, yeah, stuff like that, just trying to uh, yeah, so I throw myself into the deep end a bit and learn uh, from these, yeah, more experienced and bigger bodies because you're not going to improve otherwise. So, yeah, just trying to do the best I can against these uh, older boys and, yeah, keep developing. What was the draft night experience like, mate, and where were you? Um, I was at home with my family um, and it was pretty, yeah, uh, pretty crazy because I wasn't really expecting to go uh, at all and then got some sort of late late calls um, from a manager and yeah when it happened just sort of my family father erupted around me and my brother sort of started running around the house and stuff like that and then yeah house filled up with family and friends with man in like a couple of minutes and yeah phone started going a bit crazy but uh, yeah it was an awesome night but then yeah just gotta get head down into work now and yeah when you say late calls, how late before the draft? So it sounds like you, you actually legitimately didn't think you were going to go that night. Uh, no, so I was probably more of a chance on the rookie um, sort of end of things. And yeah, on the day really, I got um, got a call to say could be a bit of a chance at the end. Um, and yeah, sort of had to follow and watch for certain things to fall my way and luckily they did so yeah awesome opportunity. So Port was it, was it that you're a chance to Port specifically or, or just a chance to go in general? Uh, yeah chance to Port um, they were the probably the most interested out of anyone and then um, the next night probably a couple other clubs sniffing around but yeah. Had you spoken to Port at all the year? Yeah probably October I think was the Zoom meeting that we had so yeah. Yeah, uh, Josh Sinn as well, you know him a little bit, you played a lot of Yeah, so we went to school together and um, obviously played Sandra Jagans this year with him, so very lucky to have a familiar face around the place and probably just makes it that much easier trying to settle in and stuff, but um, yeah, the odds on that happening are pretty low, so very lucky. Yeah. Did, did he reach out to you straight away when you went or did you yeah. reach out that night? Well, yeah, I'd can... I'd send him a message because he went on the Wednesday and then he sent one on Thursday and then we flew over together on the Sunday. So, yeah, and we've, us four draftees, we're living together um, for our first couple of days here. So, yeah, everyone's sort of getting around each other, getting to know. Talk us through um, Dante. Where did that come from? <laughs> it's never got this much interest. Um, <laughs> yeah, so mum actually let me know the other day. Um, uh, I think I had a great 
uncle with the same name on my dad's side because he's Italian. And then, um, yeah, when my sister was, uh, well, yeah, when my mum was pregnant with her, she's the eldest, that was going to be her name if she was a boy and then she was a girl. But, yeah, so now, now that's me. Um, and I think out in the training track and around the place, we've sort of settled on viz and stuff like that because it's just a bit easier. Um, but, yeah, that's probably it on the name. <laughs>